All right, the Nigerian Data Protection Commission says we could partner with the Ministry of Communications, Innovation, and Digital Economy to train 10,000 civil servants in responsible data management. So as to strengthen the nation's data economy ecosystem, the National Commissioner, NDPC, made this announcement in Abuja in commemoration of one year anniversary of the enactment of the Nigeria's Data Protection Act 2023. Interesting one. Okay, the National Commissioner NDPC, Vicente Olatunji, explains that the Data Protection Act, are assented uh, to by the President Tinubu, is a forward and futuristic law which has produced and will continue to produce positive results. Okay, joining me in the studio is Vincent Olatunji, of course, he is the National Commissioner for Nigeria Data Protection Commission. He joins me live in the studio. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning, and thank you for having me here. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for coming. Nigeria is assumed to be a country without adequate data. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the general knowledge outside. Even with the little that we have, it seems very difficult to, you know, to assess them. Um, so what's your reaction to this? Let me first ask. Uh, not that we don't have adequate data, mm. but we have them in silos. All we need to do is to bring them together, harmonize them. Uh, that's why that's what I just said that we don't have it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Uh, you just harmonize them and bring out the value in it because data is everything globally now. There is nothing you can do without properly analyzing data to, for planning, for execution of the plan, for knowing where you are, where you want to go, and set targets and stuff like that. So it's really important, and government is doing a lot to ensure that we harmonize the data sets in Nigeria for us to be able to derive the appropriate value there. Because if you look at the five V's of uh, the value of data, the value, the velocity, the volume, the veracity, and uh, variance, all these things we have in Nigeria, and be able to analyze them properly to bring out the appropriate value from it. So, so, so let's look at it. data accuracy is germane, you know, uh, for the success of any developing nation. How has Nigeria fared so far in this in this regard? Now, I, I think if you look at it from different perspectives, there is what we call what we call personal data. That is your data, my data, who are citizens of Nigeria, and are referred to as data subjects. And those who handle those such data are data controllers and data processors. That is what the general data for analysis, for policy making, for planning, for execution. These are the different uh, types of data. But in our case, and what we do in the computer, we deal with personal data, personal information. That is your name, your telephone number, your name, your passport number, anything mm -hmm. that could be used to identify you as a natural person. Okay. And we speak to a lot of things in terms of our number in the country, the way and manner of data and personal information is being collected, is being processed, is being shared, is being stored, is being secured, all in an attempt to ensure that we have a safe and secure environment. We are an average citizen who has his or data with a data controller person who have that trust and confidence that yes, by data that which, which is with this data controller is safe and secure. So, you know one of the challenges that I really have? You want to go for NIN. You do it. You do data. Yeah. BVN. You do data. You know um, your national uh, register. You do data. Yeah. Why? INS registration. You do data. <laughs> you know FRC. You do data. Yeah. VIO. You do data. Yeah. Um, driver's license. You do data. Yeah. I'm just wondering. Can we just have just one? You know where we can be able to sync everything together. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a process. And the way we are in Nigeria today, we are getting there gradually. For instance, BVN that you mentioned yeah. was a stopgap for BVN. If you look at countries like, okay, like the UK, you have the uh, National Health Insurance number. In the US, you have the Social Security number. Now we have our name, which is a National That's Identity easy. Number in Nigeria, which is our foundational ID. That an average Nigeria of transitional age now has a name. You want to do white, jump, NYC, uh, driver license, your passports, which you just place, all these things. Without your name, you can't do them. All we need to do is to properly harmonize what we have. And there's a National Committee on Data Harmonization now at the federal level that is looking at all this, how to bring all this data together. And one good example that, to show that it's only, we're already getting there in Nigeria is that of uh, passport. 
when you go to immigration that you want to you apply for your passport they just ask for basic information the main the majority of information will be pulled from NIPSI's database so there is a kind of connectivity okay. between NIPSI and and uh, immigration the same thing will happen, should happen to road safety should happen to VIO okay. should happen to your bank yeah. should happen to your telcos so the moment you have your name that is your unique identifier which is foundational to our digital economy and with that any other data collection entity in Nigeria should have a link with Nemesis database we are able to pull your information so we are getting there it's a journey and what is happening in Nigeria is not popular to our country alone this is the case in most developing countries that you have different segments of data collectors here and there but government is trying to pull everything together and if you look at what Nemesis is doing when they were established in 2007, between 2007 and 2020, they were able to register about 39 million Nigerians. But because of the kind of collaboration and organization between NIDA and NCC and some other organizations, and now they are doing about 207 million Nigerians that have registered out of 220 million, so almost 50 percent. And that's why we're now in a of transgender age that we want to do one transaction or the other that requires identity. Mm -hmm. Because I have a name. So I thank you all really support this process. We have confidence in it. We know that it, it should work and that it is safe and secured. Gradually, we get to live with that. The only identifier you have as a Nigerian is your name. In, in your own agency, what are the challenges you're facing trying to put data together? In, in our own case, what we do is to regulate those who collect and process data yeah. to ensure that any data that they collect yeah. is processed in a safe and secured manner that will guarantee that, yes, data subjects can go to sleep as, oh, my data with this organization is, is secure. And what they need to do is to put in place both technical and organizational measures. Yeah. What you need to do in the area of technical measures, the kind of database you run, the protections that you're putting into, even your physical infrastructure, access control, information security uh, policy, all these are there. They will now look at the organizational structure in terms of human capital, yeah. the caliber of people that process data, the kind of policy, governance structure that you have within your organization, also your privacy policy that speaks to what you do, who you are, the kind of data you collect and process, how you process such data. These are things that we are now encouraging data controllers and processors, both in government and, and private sector, sector, to put in place to ensure that the data with them is, is uh, secured and safe. And the foundation is actually in our constitution of uh, 1999 as I mean, specifically section 37, which means the fact that your privacy must be protected. And this, what we are doing in the Commission in the NDPC, with the Nigeria Data Protection Act that was accepted by Mr. President on the 12th of June 2023, what we are doing now is to now create awareness among all the data collecting entities to ensure that they put in place measures to to secure such data. Is Nigeria really behind in data collection? Because you, you go to some countries, for example, just permit me, you know, the last time I was in Tanzania, it mm -hmm. looks very easy, you know, for from, you know, I was just talking to some of some of their um, citizens over there. Their data collection is, you know, how they process it. It's pretty easy for them. Yeah. You know, you go to South Africa. It's yeah. also pretty easy. You yeah. know, it's, are we really that backward <laughs> in terms of data collection? If you look at the let's look at demographics. Yeah. For instance, the population of this country you are talking about. Amazing. Maybe one third, one fourth of Nigeria. And if you are saying out of uh, 220, you already have a database of 107. That's over 50%. And that is even twice or three times the population of some countries. So the population we are talking about is huge and majorly of people who are not digital literate. Where you are saying you want to collect that, they don't even understand what you are talking about. And majority they even live in rural communities. So all these things are what you need to look at. And there are deployment of technology in different sectors, but in silos. And what we are trying to do now, under the current administration, under the Federal Ministry of Communication, Innovation and Digital Economy, is to pull all these resources together and so that there is a proper harmonization. Instead of silos, we have a kind of harmonization that will bring everybody together and for us to properly understand and this. So Nigeria is trying, I'm not, I won't say we are backward. And one thing that we need to know about this country is that Whatever we are doing, no matter where it has been done in, in, in the world, 
by the time we start, we also get better. And do it even better than those who started. And that is what that is working for us in Nigeria. The kind of technology that we are deploying. For instance, the Nigeria Interpretation Act that was accepted by Mr. President just a year ago. Now, this law is being referred to as the most progressive globally. That some countries now are now taking their own laws back to the parliament for amendment because of the lessons they are learning from us. Yeah, we started just a year ago. Thank you very much. I wish we could come back and continue this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's Mr. Vincent Olatunji uh, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Right. Let's go to sport now. I'm promoter Hayden Hearn intend that Asani Joshua is set to get a shot at becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion by facing the winner of the rematch between Tyson Fury and uh, Alexander Husek.